Hello and welcome to CADLINK. Tupel has been integrating CAT to ERP for about 10 years. We have a strong relationship with CAD and ERP companies. Today I will be demonstrating CADLINK using SOLIDWORKS. Now the way CADLINK works is once the engineers have put a model together using their CAD software, um, they can either be modifying the model or they might be creating it from scratch. Once they're ready to push this bill of material into their ERP system, they would run CADLINK. CADLINK is an add-in to your CAD software, so once the engineer is ready to push that information into your ERP system, they will just run it from the toolbar which will connect to their ERP software and it will do its comparison. It will go into their ERP system to see whether or not a bill of material already exists, checks if the parts exist, checks whether or not the operations may already be there for those assemblies, and it will display all the comparison information in this table format. As you can see, it picks up all the multi-level out of SOLIDWORKS and it also displays the bill of material in different colors to kind of show the engineer what the differences are and all the changes. Now any lines that are white are components that already exist inside your ERP. Anything that's green are new parts and therefore once you click save the part will get created inside the part table or the item table and it will also push a bill of material through. Now when you create a new part inside any ERP system there are some mandatory fields you need to fill in. So one of them might be the description, unit of measure, sometimes you have group code, class ID, family code, ABC code, all that information is brought out to you via CADLINK. It's a live connection into your ERP system so any drop down field is a live connection to the information that you have inside your ERP. The engineer can select all that information right out of CADLINK depending on what configuration they need to use. Now the yellow color is the difference between the two systems. Now you have this part, this component here that already exists inside your ERP system but the description not, might not match. It will then be highlighted in yellow. Now if you right click on that field, it would actually show you the two descriptions. It will show you what the description is inside SOLIDWORKS and it will also show you the description inside your ERP system. The engineer can select the correct description, even allow them to modify the description. And when they click save, that description gets updated inside SOLIDWORKS as well as inside their ERP system. Now gray lines are parts that are going to be deleted or removed from the bill of material. So if we have this assembly here and what it's doing it's comparing to the most recent assembly. So in this case it's comparing to uh, this assembly revision A. It's saying that this component here currently exists in the bomb inside ERP and it is now going to be removed. Now the reason why it'll, it will get removed is because CADLINK thinks that the structure inside the CAD software, so in this case in SOLIDWORKS, is correct. So you are either replacing a part with another part or you might have forgotten to design that inside SOLIDWORKS. So it's kind of giving you heads up Sometimes the engineer will then figure out and say, hey, you know what, I don't need to delete this from the bill of material, I actually forgot to model that. So we'll exit CADLINK, go into SOLIDWORKS, add that component, and then run it again. So again, it's just kind of letting the engineer know, saying that that part or that component will get removed from the assembly. Now, another functionality that we've added to CADLINK is the ability to add manual parts. Being able to add manual part will allow the engineer to add parts that are not designed inside SOLIDWORKS but that 
but that need to be added to the bill of material inside their ERP system. So in some cases, you might want to add bulbs. You might not um, model those components. So Catling will allow you to add manual parts, allow you to do a search into your ERP system, either by part number or by description. Once you find the correct item you're looking for, you can add it to the bomb, and you can also modify the quantity depending on how many you need. Another functionality here would be to be able to go search for parts instead of creating new parts. So since this part here does not exist inside your ERP system, you might think to yourself and say, you know what, we do have this part that may already exist inside um, our ERP system. So you have this little button which will allow you to go into your ERP system, search by part number or search by description. And if you do find the component that you are looking for, you can just go onto the list and press select. Now what that does is it brings the information back. So it takes the information back and uh, brings the part number in the description. And once you click save, it will update those fields inside SOLIDWORKS to put the correct part number along with, it, with its description. Now what we do for raw material is we can pull the raw material right out of SOLIDWORKS but there are some times where the engineer does not really put that information inside their CAD software. Um, so we have given them the ability to again search into their ERP system for that raw material information. So in this case I'm looking for an aluminum sheet so I just put ALU and I can choose that raw material information. That raw material information gets saved back here and once I click save it will actually get pushed to SOLIDWORKS. So that way next time the engineer runs this model that raw material information already exists there. Now we do have this configuration window here which allows you to map all that information. For SOLIDWORKS um, you can search for information either inside the custom table or in the configuration table specific. Um, you can uh, map out what your field mapping is directly from here. Operations which we'll get short um, in about a couple of minutes here. But we also have the different color um, schematic here where you can choose different colors if you're not happy with what we've provided you with. Now there's different ECO groups that we can um, assign CADLINK once, it's, uh, once it uh, pushes in a bill of material through. Um, there is different uh, revision settings as well if you want us to use the CAD revision or the ERP revision compare CAD bomb with the latest ERP system. So there are some different uh, functionalities that you would be able to uh, uh, for the user to be able to set it up um, directly from CADLINK. Now using our operations tab here um, what this does is it actually shows you all the assemblies right from um, right from the bill of material it will show you the operations that already exist for that assembly right out of our ERP. Now for new assemblies it allow you to choose from the drop down here. Um, all we did here is uh, we can choose existing parts that exist from ERP and uh, give them some sort of like template description on it so that way I, it'll be it's faster for us to search and uh, the engineer can select templates for operations instead of adding them one by one. The bomb changes tab will show you all the different changes that you're making to the bill of material before you click the commit button which would be the save button. Now we do have uh, lots of customers or there are some people out there that have 
you know, bill of materials that are more than a thousand parts. So if they're only making changes to one or two things there, um, this table here, it's kind of like a confirmation table just to make sure that all the changes they're making are the changes that they want to commit. Document property tab. This just shows you the properties inside your parts so you can look at the custom properties or your configuration table. Um, again, we've designed this in a way that will kind of um, extend CAD link to engineers for them to see the SOLIDWORKS information without having to leave CAD link. Um, so this information here, you cannot really uh, modify it. If you do need to modify the information inside your properties table, we highly suggest that you go into um, SOLIDWORKS and make those changes, but at least you have this tab here so you can see what kind of information already um, is in there. Catling messages uh, window here. This will actually give you new error messages uh, before you click save. We do follow uh, most of the ERP's logic, so we need to make sure that we satisfy that before we push anything in. So the reason why maybe your save button is grayed out is because you are not following all the rules. So this would be the tab that would kind of explain to you what needs to be done. Um, so your save button is black, uh, back and working.